You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Uh, Mike Denbrock met with reporters on Saturday after LSU practiced over on the Ponderosa. Had a little controlled scrimmage there as well, which was not available to the media, by the way. Um, some of the the takeaways from practice this weekend, continuing to watch Harold Perkins work at inside linebacker. Omar Spates is turning a lot of heads as well. He's the linebacker that they brought in from Oregon State. And your prototypical big NFL inside linebacker. They're creating a really, really sharp tandem. Um, the transfers are working at the jack position right now with Braden Swinson and uh, uh, Ovia Gofu from, from Texas. It, um, I think it's also been interesting watching some of the rotations on the offensive line, notably, of course, Marlon Martinez still working at starting center with Charles Turner out, and you're very limited at running back, where it's, it's essentially Noah Kane, um, the freshman, Trey Holly, and then a lot of walk-ons working right there. But uh, as far as the secondary, and that's one of the spots that we talked about a lot that I was interested in, specifically cornerback, the reports that I keep hearing, um, they love Javen Tobiano, who's the freshman, and they have moved him a lot this spring. He has worked at nickel, he has worked on the outside, and he has worked at safety. So they have this luxury now of trying to see where he's going to fit in this defense but they really like him a lot. Um, my understanding is that the cornerbacks that ran with the first team um, were uh, LaTerrence Welch and uh, and Zai Alexander. Denver Harris is practicing, and the some of the feedback I'm getting on Denver Harris right now is super athletic, but you can tell he's, just, he's played a lot of man coverage his whole life. He's got to learn how to play zone and play in these defensive concepts, but that's why spring is great for a transfer coming in. You know the the athleticism, all the physical characteristics are there. It's becoming comfortable in the defense, so that's a great thing about spring right now. And, of course, Deuce Chestnut, J.K. Johnson from Syracuse and Ohio State, respectively, are out. And those may well it may well end up being your day one, game one, starting outside cornerbacks against uh, against Florida State, but a lot of time before they, they figure all of that out. Um, but Mike Denbrock met with reporters, and it was an opportunity to hear from Mike Denbrock about a lot of things offensively, and namely the quarterback. And he was asked about Jaden Daniels, who's back now for a fifth season in college ball, and Jaden Daniels taking the next step in his progression. You know, Jaden's ability to push the ball down the field consistently, I think, is something that we've worked very hard on this spring. He's worked on it over the winter. Uh, he's worked on it even when he's been away from here. So we want to be a threat in the vertical passing game. And, you know, that takes some aggressiveness at the quarterback position. And, and we want him to step into that role and not be afraid to kind of let it fly. So we've encouraged him to do that. He's done an unbelievable job here early in, in the spring, about halfway through, and uh, really, really like the progress that we've made there. And obviously we've got some dynamic guys that can go get it on the outside. So that hopefully bodes well for us being a little bit more explosive offensively. That's going to be a big key for us. That's no secret. It was a big point of contention and frustration for fans a lot of last year was maybe Jaden be a little gun shy, not one to push the ball downfield, put it in harm's way. He kept the turnovers way, way down, but at times you did see the explosiveness in the passing game. The Florida game certainly comes to mind the second half against Auburn. There there were those moments. For, I mean, certainly did it in the first half against Georgia in the SC Championship game before the injury, and then we saw Nussmeyer do it in the second half as well. But how do you do that? How, how do you coach aggressiveness into a into a quarterback? I'll be honest with you, I think more than anything, it's a mindset that you have to drill just like you drill any other mindset. So if you're going to be a team that is a power team and you don't run power very much in practice, then you're going to, it's a hard, it's hard to make it come out as a play caller when it's time to, to call it. And I don't know that I scripted it enough in practices and, and things like, so that's been the biggest adjustment. It's something that you have to make yourself do quite frankly. It's a lot easier to call another hitch route knowing that it's going to be complete than it is to take a shot down the field. But as a coach, we've got to be willing to do that and we've got to be able to practice those things every day in practice and force the ball down the field and just develop that mentality of that's how we're going to play the game. 
We're certainly going to have the receivers to go get it. A lot of the feedback that I'm hearing is Brian Thomas and um, Kyron Lacey are, are blowing up in the spring. You know you got Malik Neighbors back, and you got a whole slew of really talented young pass catchers coming in. That's not even to talk about the tight ends with Mason Taylor coming back, and then others like Kamorian Pimpton, who's a transfer coming in this year, uh, Mac Markway, Jackson McGowan. They've loaded up at, at tight end, and you better believe all those guys are going to be involved in the pitch and catch part of the, of the game as well. Um, one more, though, from Denbrock. And uh, it, this was just an interesting com comparative answer because remember where this team was a year ago in spring, and we've talked about it a lot, but they were, they were working on habits last spring, you know, just implementing good habits and good, good practices and what, what the expectation was throughout the program. Well, now that you're a year removed and you played in an SC championship game in year one and all this stuff, how different is it this spring from last spring? What everybody's been able to do is now, now that we know each other, now that we, we have a good understanding of the scheme overall, uh, we've gotten a chance to really kind of dig into the ins and outs, uh, the details of what everybody needs to do. And not only that, but based on the different things that they're going to be faced with during the season, whether it's scheme-wise, whether it's personnel-wise, they know how we're going to game plan for that, and they can kind of prepare themselves a little bit earlier than we could a year ago for that kind of thing. Tigers will be back on the practice field a couple of times this week. They're starting to work into some of those scrimmages in the weekend as we inch closer to the spring game uh, at the end of this month. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.